Hi there. You already know how to do one-step equations using addition and subtraction to solve, and you now know how to do how to work with positive and negative numbers. So we're going to put the two together. And I'm just going to run through a couple short examples. Here's the first one. I've got n plus 19 equals 6. I want to know what n is. So in order to do that, I've got to get rid of a plus 19. So when I write it down, n plus 19, I'm going to leave some space and then write my equals 6. Now to undo addition, I would subtract. So if I'm adding 19, I'm going to turn around and subtract 19 on the right and on the left. Now on the left side, I get n and then this much together is 0, so n plus 0. And on the right, I've got 6 minus 19. Since that's not a traditional subtraction problem, I can't take 6 minus 19 without working with the negative. That's when I usually will go and change this to plus a negative 19. You can always change subtraction into addition. And then when I look at it, I've got a 6 and a 19 if I just consider the absolute value. So the absolute value of this is 6. The absolute value of this is 19. Since I'm adding a positive number and a negative number, I need to look at their absolute values and actually I'm going to subtract. So over to the side here, I subtracted in the natural order. 19 minus 6 is 13. So that's my cloud work. That's my scratch work. So I'm going to write down 13 over here and then go back and look at my two numbers. I had a positive and a negative. Since 19 is larger than 6 and 19 was negative, it's going to dominate and my sign will be negative on the 13. So my final answer is n equals negative 13. Whenever I'm doing a problem that involves subtracting a negative, I always change that to addition because minus a minus turns into plus plus. So in this case, I end up with an equation, and I, I'm just going to rewrite it. I end up with x plus 10 equals 4. Now that's not too difficult to solve. I need to undo the plus 10. And we know that to undo addition, we subtract. I subtract 10. So when I get to this point, I have x and then a plus 10 and a negative 10 is 0, so I just get x plus 0. And on the right side, I've got 4 minus 10. So now again, I'm going to change this subtraction into addition, so it's plus a negative. Now I've got a positive number and a negative number, so I actually need to look at their absolute values. I've got a 4 and a 10. So I come over to the side. I know that 10 minus 4 is 6. That's my cloud work. So my answer is going to be 6, and then I look to see which number was larger, the 4 or the 10. Since 10 is larger, it's negative. My answer is negative, and I get x equals negative 6. I want to take a second and look at this same problem again. In the previous example, I subtracted 10 from both sides, but you could think of it a little bit differently. If I have x plus 10, we have a property that says any number, let's say 6, plus its opposite will give you 0. Or I could say um, 11 plus its opposite is 0. I could say a plus its opposite is 0. Those are additive inverses. So another alternative to subtracting 10 would be just to add its inverse. So I could add a negative 10 to both sides if I wanted to. When I do that, over on the left side, 10 plus a negative 10 is 0. So I get x plus 0. And on the right side, it's addition. And I have a positive number and a negative number. So I look at their absolute values. I subtract 10 minus 4, and I get 6. Because 10 is larger than 4 and it's negative, my answer is x equals negative 6. So for any problem that you're solving with addition and subtraction, you are welcome to either just undo it with the other operation, the opposite operation. So to undo subtraction, we add. To undo addition, we subtract. Or you could look at the number and think of its additive inverse, its opposite. 
because just like we can say 10 minus 10 equals 0, I can say 10 plus its opposite is 0. And you are welcome to use either one of these when you do these problems. Alright, there you have it. Good luck!